Hey sportsmen, welcome to the Hot Bites Fishing Report. This week, up here again at Traverse Bay Tackle in Traverse City, Michigan. They are, as you can see, loaded to bear with ice fishing stuff. We got good safe ice up here in the North Country, not so much in the South. So you guys South that are looking for ice fishing, head North and you can find some really good fishing up here on these Northern Michigan lakes. Stay tuned. So we got four really good ice fishing reports this week, starting, that's right, right here in Traverse City on Lake Leelanau for walleye and perch mix bag. So what are the guys catching these fish on? They just had a little tournament out of the Narrows last week, and it looked like some really nice bags of fish came in. So they were catching most of the fish there on jig and spoons and tip-ups mix. So guys, we're setting up a spread of tip-ups you know, probably going out with a group, three, four, five guys, getting a set of tip-ups at the top of the roll, and then going ahead and isolating marks at the bottom of the roll or out in the flats and catching walleye on jigging spoons tipped with a minnow head. So how are they fishing these uh, tip-ups? Well, the ones that they're catching walleye on have been on blues, and the ones for jigging spoons have been on small, small minnows or minnow heads. So. When you're setting up your tip up for, uh, specifically for walleye, make super sure that you're using a fluorocarbon leader that goes between your braid and your treble hook. Most of the guys are using a super small treble, like a number 10 or even a 12, and then they're going to maybe six or eight pound test, oh, 18 inches to two foot of fluoro. Just, you know, go ahead and put a weight maybe six or eight inches above your hook to keep your blue from running up on you but after a while they'll settle down and pretty much swim at the right depth. But the big key is it's super clean water up in these Traverse City region lakes and you're gonna to wanna to have a fluorocarbon leader and don't go too heavy. They're, they can be a little bit spooky. So set that whole rig where the minnow is gonna be maybe 12 inches off the bottom. Those walleye are gonna skim the bottom while they're cruising at this time of year. Their bellies are gonna be two, three, four inches off the bottom. So being up a foot is absolutely perfect. You'll get some random northerns, but right now on Lake Leelanau, it seems like the walleye bite is happening. So if you run into some perch, they're usually good ones. And guys have been catching those on their jigging rods with either a jigging spoon and a minnow head, a dew jigger, you know, even Russian spoons have been producing some fish. Uh, red eye or orange eye seems to be the best on your Russian spoons. So check out the Traverse City region, Lake Leelanau for walleye and perch. Hey, and thanks to Traverse Bay Tackle for sponsoring these Traverse City area reports. They've got a great store right here, close to the bay, right at the highway here in Grand, and it is just packed with stuff right now. They've got all the stuff you need, not only for ice fishing, but if you just can't stand waiting for spring, their shelves are stocked with lots of the stuff that they got going for open water as well. So visit them here at Traverse Bay Tackle. Hey, and we'll see you again here on the Traverse City Fishing Report. You know, if you're an angler, you need space for all your stuff. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Let me show you how the Polar Craft Kodiak gives you enough room to put everything you need for a great day of fishing. A huge rod locker to hold a bunch of rods with battery storage underneath for your front trolling motor. Two sides of wing storage to put all your tackle boxes and all the stuff you need for fishing. And an in-floor spot to put wet storage. Anchors, ropes, drift socks, and everything you have to have a good day on the water. Hey, visit your local Polar Craft dealer and check out the Kodiak and all the really cool features. You're going to love what you see. This second report is very similar to the first report, the Traverse City report. It's just we're out of Alpena and we're on Long Lake. Now Long Lake is just north of Alpena and it's a small walleye and perch factory. Now this is also a smallmouth lake in the summertime during soft water, but right now it seems like 20 foot has been the number for guys catching both combinations of walleye and perch on Long Lake. So how are they doing it? Like I said, this could be a clone of the Traverse City report because to be honest, they're catching them on tip ups and blues or small minnows. And they're also using, you guessed it, jigging spoons, do jiggers with small minnows or a minnow head. Now the key here on Long Lake is to find the breaks and to find that 20 foot depth that has marks. So set a spread of tip ups down the edge 
and then once you encounter some fish, then go ahead and set up shop for jigging or dead sticking right there, not too far away from your active tip-up rods. These fish have been pretty good moving around just a little bit, so it's not like you've got to bounce it right off their head. These fish are moving, they're moving in and out, and so if you just get in that 18, 19, 20 foot range, you should encounter some fish. So what are the best colors? I know this about Long Lake. In the open water period of time, chartreuses and oranges and greens are really good. So when you're fishing, jigging stuff especially like dew jiggers or jigging spoons, try to use a little bit of reflective tape that has either orange or green or chartreuse on it. That might help your numbers tremendously. So who sponsors this report? Where can you stay? What can you do? There's also a good bite of bluegills going on up at Fletcher's Floodwaters right now. And the guys over at Jack's Landing have been helping bringing you these reports for years. Jack's Landing is right there on the shores of the flood water. It's a great place to just get away for a few days, have a great time ice fishing. You don't even need to have machinery if you stay at Jack's because a lot of the best bite for bluegills is right out in front of the resort. So Jack's Landing. And our friend Steve Hubert from up at Chum Bucket Charters, he's the best guide on Lake Huron, bar none, up here in the Alpena region. He will put fish in the boat for you, and if you can talk him into it, he might take you ice fishing as well. He loves to ice fish, so give Steve a call. And also, the Ramada, right there in downtown. If you're just coming in for a night, and you're going to hook up with Steve, or you're going to go ice fishing for a short trip, the Ramada, right on US 23 on the north side of Alpena, is fisherman friendly. They really understand what guys are looking for. They got a massive big parking lot. They got a restaurant. They got all the amenities. So check the Ramada out. Hey, and check out the Alpena region for this year's ice fishing. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. Another really good report, and we've made a commitment to bring you a different river every week here during the winter because one of the most ignored fisheries here in the state of Michigan is the awesome river fishing that happens during the winter months. So the Betsy River, it's this week, it's happening mid-river. The mid-river sections of the Betsy are producing really good catches of steelhead. Now, how are they catching them? Well, I would always suggest whether you go with my guy, Captain Alex, or you go with another river guide from up in the region, a river guide can really up, the, up your catch rate, can really help you catch a lot of fish and have a memorable day. If you're gonna go by yourself, this is the way these guys are catching the fish. They're catching them on deep pools. They're catching them on seams by fallen timber. They're catching them also on the backside of sand. All of these three spots are holding lots of fish. They're probably going to have you out there throwing floats with spawn underneath. Or in clean water circumstances, beads are also very effective. Chartreuses and oranges have been great all season long on the Betsy. So remember that when you're either uh, getting your spawn or getting your beads. But again, river fishing is one of those things that I would always tell people it is worth the time and worth the money to hire a good guide. You put a couple of guys in the boat, you both hook up with quality fish, you have a great day on the water, you know that all the time you're fishing, you're on the right spot on the river, making your cast to the right areas on those spots, really upping your catch. But right now, steelhead fishing on the Betsy River. Hey, and when you're up in the Betsy River area, check out my friend from Tiny Bubbles Charters, Captain Dave Rommel. Now, Captain Dave doesn't often do any river chartering, but he's got a great charter business going on, the, on Crystal Lake as well as on the big water for coho salmon on, and in Crystal as well as perch and rock bass. Now, that's a really unique combination, and guys, you got to check this out. The fall fishing up here is awesome, and if it lets out early, if the ice doesn't set up on Crystal and comes out really early, Captain Dave can get you out there for some awesome perch fishing, coho fishing, or rockback bass fishing on crystal. He can also get you out on the big water for lake trout and all of the big water species. Now, if you're looking for a great place to stay up there on the water in a resort setting, 
the people up at Sleeping Bear Hideaway Resort right there on Little Platte Lake. It's an awesome bass fishery. They've got amazing newly renovated cabins. They're an awesome place to stay. They're fishermen friendly. It's what they do for a living, cater to the fishermen. And when you're up here in the Benzie County region and you're looking for something unique to do, let's say maybe you wanna spend a half a day doing something really cool, the folks over at Riverside Canoes up there on the sleep, get, goes through the Sleeping Bear National Park. They have a canoe trip that will absolutely blow your hair back. It is scenic, it is gorgeous. It'll show you all of that river right there in the National Preserve that you aren't able to see. So check those guys out for a half a day trip and have fun here in Benzie County. Hey everyone, Jeff Miller with Trackstack here today. Just kind of wanting to go over a little bit more of our T-bolt mounting application. Uh, a lot of questions always on this. This is all of our boat manufacturers' gunnel walls that have a track system built into it that they call it's a slot in there um, where we can actually take our aluminum T-bolt brackets we make, our stainless steel T-nuts that we machine, and drop them inside that slot. They rotate up and sit at a 45 degree angle inside here. We tighten up these nuts on here and it locks this track and T-bolt bracket right down to the gunnel wall of this boat right here. So now we've got a nice solid platform uh, that's sitting up parallel on top of our gunnel wall so that we can slide in beverage holders, tool holder caddies, fishing rod holders that we want. We can snug everything down here in place. We can adjust rod holders up and down. We can fish for any species we want for whatever we bought our boat for. So just wanted to give you a quick over application and show you how these T-bolts are designed to go with our standard mounting track. You pick the track, you pick the brackets that you need to go into each track, mount it secure. The, more, the longer the track and the more brackets on here, the stronger we get. So if we're mounting vertical trees on here, downriggers, we do recommend a longer piece of track with a bracket on every row. So we're spreading the weight distribution along the whole entire gunnel wall of the boat. So it's not our products. We want to make sure that the lip of that uh, track that they put in the gunnel wall of the boat is nice and solid and strong and we're distributing the weight and we got a nice solid setup for you. So any more information? Information that you need is on the website at trackstech.com or call our factory and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you. So guys, we're going to end the day in the western upper peninsula, way over almost to Wisconsin, there on Lake Gogebic. And my friends Tim and Sarah over at the Timbers Resort tell us that the fish are biting really well there on Lake Ogebic. Now it's a mixed bag of some awful nice perch and some really good walleye. And they tell me they're out on the flats or on the deep side of the points. Now, what's happening there? They're fishing right around Porcupine Point and also right out from AJ's Resort. Now those two spots out in the mud have been producing good catches of both perch and walleye when dead sticking or using tip ups. Now. Dead sticking is just what, like it sounds. You rig up for jigging with maybe a jigging, a jigging uh, spoon or um, a heavy dew jigger, and you can tip that with, if you're gonna actively work it, tip it with a minnow head. Now, if you're gonna let it just sit and do its work, and like dead sticking means, just lay your rod down with the tip able to go down the hole uh, and just lift it every once in a while, then tail hook or back behind the dorsal hook a smaller minnow and just let them swim with your sw swimming spoon and they kind of are constantly fighting against the weight of that spoon and it brings them back like a pendulum. That little action down there close to the bottom, maybe just two, three inches off the bottom can be deadly for drawing in walleye and getting them to, to hit. One of the tricks to catching fish on dead rods is to consistently pick your rod up and go ahead and drop it down quickly and pound the bottom to create a silt cloud and then go ahead and immediately lay your rod down. That triggers the minnow to swim and it also creates the silt poof that, that curiosity will bring in both perch and walleye and when they see that minnow swimming against the weight of the jig and spoon, that's where dead sticking can be awesome. It can be at times the best presentation for big perch because they don't want to chase things around. They just want to be coaxed with the natural swimming motion of that minnow. Now, when you're fishing for tip up, same thing. Here in Gogebic, don't get too far off the bottom. I'd get that bait no more than eight inches, six inches to 10 inches off the bottom. Use a depth weight on your treble hook to find that exact spot. Mark it with a marker on your line so you're sure you're in the right spot. They're fishing with blues, they're fishing with small perch minnows, and you're gonna get, again, a mixed bag of walleyes 
and Big Perch. But Lake Ogebic right now out on the mud flats is producing some gigantic perch. One little quick tip here, this is a sensitive fishery. And here at Fisherman's Digest, we very rarely tell anybody what to do, but we're gonna encourage catch and release on those super big perch, those 13 and 14 inchers. Go ahead and take a quick picture and try to let them back go. It's a sensitive fishery, we don't wanna abuse it. But hey, check out Lake Ogebic in the Western UP this week. So hey, thanks for joining us on this week's Hot Bite Fishing Report. It's been a weird year, we agree. The southern part of Michigan just doesn't have really any safe ice that I would dare tell anybody, even my worst enemy, to go out on. And up here in the north country, even though it's colder and even though they've got a lot of safe ice, still use caution. Don't just fly out there on a four-wheeler or a snowmobile. Know where you're at, test and spud your way out a little bit, figure out what kind of conditions you're dealing with because we've had just two consistent of, of right at freezing or slightly above freezing at times, and that can soften up even good ice and make it unsafe. So, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Not from Traverse Bay Tackle, but this week, get your butt in here. They've got all the stuff you need for ice fishing. Get out on the lake and enjoy a good time here at Traverse Bay Tackle, here in the Traverse City region, and all through Michigan.